Well, good evening, good evening, good evening. I want to welcome everybody here to our weekly Bible study. I'm just grateful for all of you who are joining me here live on Facebook. And for those of you who are joining at a later date, we uh, we thank God for you. Um, we're just grateful for this opportunity that we can come together always, that we can come together uh, in this fashion to study the word of the Lord together. And uh, I want to also thank those who are joining later on YouTube. Uh, we thank God for your support uh, for our ministry on our YouTube channel. And if you're watching and you have not um, uh, visited our, our YouTube channel, I want to encourage you to definitely go there and take a look. Um, and uh, you will find a lot of content there, ministry content that I know will be a blessing. And so I thank all of you for joining. It's great to see my mom here, Violet Thomas, and I see uh, CD. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. And uh, you can support us. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. We're going to talk today about a very important topic. We're gonna we're gonna talk about forgiveness. We're gonna talk about forgiveness. Uh, forgiveness is so paramountly important um, in our Christian experience, in our Christian lives, um, and so we want to uh, make that our focus tonight. And it is my prayer for you that when we are finished, you will have more clarity, that you will have um, a more practical approach in terms of how you can go about uh, forgiving and making sure that you have forgiven who you need to forgive. I think sometimes we can take experiences and we can take uh, things that we go through and we can kind of file it away. It's almost like when you pack something away in the storage room and you forget about it it's just it's just packed away there and you don't you don't revisit it you don't touch it well forgiveness is something that must be revisited forgiveness is something that we have to consider we have to think about so let's start we're just going to open in prayer uh so bow your heads with me as we pray father we thank you tonight for this opportunity to come together to study your word. And I pray tonight, God, that as we delve into your word, I pray that you would speak by the power of your divine spirit and minister into your people as we, as we, as we methodically go through the word and grant them understanding, grant them revelation knowledge cause something to click in their in their mind, in their heart, in their soul, in their spirit, and grant in each of us the capacity to forgive. Grant in each of us your heart that we would forgive others as you have forgiven us. And for this, we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. So yeah, so today we want to talk about giving forgiveness. We want to talk about giving uh, forgiveness. And I want to start with this question tonight. You can type it in the chat. God bless you. Sister Faye Dunn, First Lady Ruth is here per, per usual, her mandatory requirement, I, I should say. <laughs> um, the first question I want to ask is, is this. What happens to us when we experience rejection or betrayal? What happens? What are the feelings that we encounter? What are the emotions? What are the consequences of that in, in our lives? What happens to us when we experience rejection and betrayal and disappointment? Somebody you maybe place your trust in somebody who you had a, had a particular expectation of and 
and they fell massively short of uh, your expectation. I see angry, sad, hurt, loss of trust. Thank you for that. I bless you, uh, uh, Rachel or Rochelle. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining. We're talking about forgiveness. What are the feelings? What are the emotions when we we experience rejection or or uh, betrayal? I see disappointment. That that is true. Disappointment is there too. Um, I think. And as first lady said, anger. Also, potentially bitterness. Right? Bitterness can can seep in, and really just trickle in like a steady drip into our into our hearts um it's important to understand that god designed us with the need for acceptance and it is god and at the end of the day it is only god who can meet that need that's what the bible says trust not in the arm of flesh or trust not in man because men will fail you but god will never fail you but God has created us with this need for acceptance, for, for community, uh, for trust, trust in terms of trusting one another, being vulnerable with that trust, being trusting in a, in a vulnerable context. Um, but it becomes difficult when we don't get those things that we expect. It's difficult when we don't get the protection, the care, the loyalty that is supposed to be there. It, it can cut deep. And sadly, in this fallen world that we live in, people tend to reject and offend each other. I think we, I think we can all agree with, on that point. And therefore, as you mentioned here in the chat, uh, as you mentioned here in the chat, we, whenever we feel rejected, whenever we feel hurt, it can lead very quickly to anger. It can lead to hatred. It can lead to vengefulness. It can lead to bitterness. And at the end of the day, it can lead to unforgiveness. Now, the reason why we're talking about unforgiveness is because the Bible is adamantly clear on this the bible is adamantly clear on this point that if we expect forgiveness from god we also must forgive we also must forgive and when you think about it just in a if you step back and think about forgiveness there's a certain level of hypocrisy in the idea that I receive forgiveness from God. I pursue forgiveness from God. And based on his promise, I expect it. I expect forgiveness from God. But then I'm, uh, but then I'm unwilling to offer that same forgiveness let's launch with this parable and, and think about what this means and the lesson that is born out of this parable that Jesus taught. Jesus spoke, and I'm just paraphrasing, Jesus told a parable or a story about a man who owed his master a lot. He was in debt to his master. And he went to his master and said, look, it's a difficult time. Have mercy on me. And, and, and his master had compassion. And his master said, look, it's okay. I will forgive you of what you owe. I will forgive you of your debt. And the same man now went away forgiven. He went away absolved of the debt. He went away forgiven. And there was a man who owed him. There was a man who now was indebted to him. And when this man came to him and said, look, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me and, and you know, give me some more time, this, that, the other. This man who was just forgiven, 
looked at this man who owed him and said, and the Bible says he literally grabbed him by his coat, almost like he would grab somebody and aggressively. He grabbed him by the collar of his shirt and told him, I will send you to the debt collectors and you will pay me everything you owe. And back in the biblical days, whenever, whenever you owed a debt, you would, you would, you, your children would be taken as slaves, not in terms of slaves as we know it, in terms of slavery in African-American history, but slavery in those days was simple servitude for an extended period of time until the debt was paid off. And so here is a man who was forgiven by his master, but now when somebody came to him saying, I need your forgiveness, he was not willing to extend the forgiveness that was extended to him. And so I want us tonight to think about forgiveness in this particular context, in the context that we have to say within ourselves, look, I receive forgiveness from God. Think of how many times we've offended God. Think about how many times we've sinned against him. Think about how many, how many times we've fallen short and the grace and the mercy of God. Think about the times where, think about the times where we knowingly did or said what we shouldn't have said or done, but yet God is merciful. We must also offer that same forgiveness to others. It's so encouraging seeing Sister uh, Christine here, sister, uh, sister Doreen, First Lady Lewinson, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Thank you for joining with us today. Thank you so much. So we're talking about forgiveness. We're talking about forgiveness. And we're talking about how we respond when we're rejected, when we are offended, when we, when we feel hurt. I want us to turn to Psalms chapter 73. And we're gonna look at verse 21. And I think this passage kind of gives a picture of what we're talking about. Psalm 73, verse 21 and, and uh, verse, well, well, verse 22, we'll read both of them. And this is what the scriptures say to us here. The Bible says, thus my heart was grieved and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. I'm gonna read that again. The psalmist wrote, thus my heart was grieved and it was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. Just reading those two verses, it gives us a snapshot of how we feel when we are betrayed, when we are disappointed, when we are rejected, when we are deeply hurt. There's a there's there's grief. You know, we don't get angry about things we don't care about, right? If we don't care about a thing, we don't be, we are not attached to it emotionally. We are not attached to it in terms of our expectations, right? But when we care about a person, when we care about a thing, when we care, that's when the hurt can cut deep. God bless you, uh, Camille Brown. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Sister Georgia Thomas, God bless you. Right? We, we, we feel it when we care. And this is where unforgiveness and bitterness can set in that when we are hurt, our hearts are grieved. You ever been there where something hurt you and your heart is grieved? You're just weighted down? And then the psalmist said, I was foolish. To me, this kind of describes somebody who maybe has a temper. He says, I was foolish. So foolish was I and ignorant. I, I was as a beast before you. Like he's saying, I, you know, I lost all sense of normalcy, as it were. I want us to also read Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Galatians 5, we're going to look at verse 19. Now, as you're turning there, think about, and I guess I'll ask it in the form of a question. What 
or or simply we're we're going to look at what happens to us if we allow unforgiveness and all the host of the emotions tied to it the word is going to show us what happens to an individual who who fully embraces bitterness or grudge holding right i i want you to see these are the characteristics that can be born out of it galatians 5 verse 19 and and we're going to look at what can manifest in the life of an individual in whom they embrace unforgiveness. And the Bible says this, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such alike. Now, this list is important because when you read off this list, when you, when you, when you read off this list here, you can say to yourself, I can see how that somebody who is angry about something that was done to them, for example, adultery, somebody within a marriage feels like says okay you weren't faithful I'm, I'm not forgiving you and what do they do they they want to get revenge they also commit adultery uncleanness lascivia all of these things can be born out of unforgiveness and this is why we have to deal with unforgiveness and while and and while while we can think of extreme cases there's also listed here wrath strife drunkenness, murders. Jesus said, even what you say about people, you can murder them with your words. And the Bible says regarding these works of the flesh, the Bible says here in Galatians, of which I tell you, the Bible says before, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And so the word of God is making it clear that, look, if we allow unforgiveness, bitterness, grudge holding to bring us to this point we are disqualifying ourselves and it is possible and i'm i'm gonna keep it real with you it is possible to be in church and be wrathful it is possible to be in church and to be strife laden it is possible to be in the body of christ as it were but yet these works of the flesh are real and they are active and they are alive in us. So this choice can express itself. The choice to do any of these things can express itself in hostility or or what or what we just read here, the works of the flesh. And the danger about these works of the flesh is that if we allow them to become a part of our lives, they, they just become a part of us. They become, they become a part of a pattern that we develop in, in our personalities. And it literally merges with us. We have to fight to make sure that, listen, if there's something that has happened in your life, if somebody has done something so deeply hurtful, deeply painful, and you're saying to yourself, how in the world am I, I don't have the capacity to forgive them. It's not in me, man. You don't, you know, you don't know what they did. You don't know how they just turned their back on me. You don't know I place my trust in them and they and they took advantage. You don't you don't know how they completely changed the trajectory of my life. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I understand. But what I know is that God can give you, God will give you the capacity to forgive. Yes. It's not in you to do it of your own self, but the Spirit of God will give you the capacity to forgive. 
So I want to challenge you that if, number one, evaluate your life. Let's make sure to identify areas in which we need to forgive others. Let us take the time. One of the most pivotal prayers in the word of God is that prayer of David. I love, I thank God that he included this prayer in the scriptures where David prayed, Lord, search me and know me. See if there be any wicked way in me. What a prayer. And, and that's a prayer I want you to pray because what David is saying essentially is this. David is saying, Lord, show me things about me that I've either ignored. Show me things about me that I'm not paying attention to. Show me things about me that I haven't even recognized. Lord, search me, know me. The Bible says, the Bible says that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching the inward parts of the belly. The Holy Spirit is like a light, like a light that will, that will scan your entire being. Allow the spirit of God to, 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 to search you and to know you and to reveal to you, to reveal to you the areas. There may be somebody, watch this, there may be somebody that you thought you had forgiven and you filed it away. We must forgive. Allow the Spirit of God to search you. Allow the Spirit of God to identify in you and if you are somebody who is living in the bitterness of an experience, if you're somebody who's living in the bitterness of something painful, I listen, I sympathize with you and I sympathize for you. And I'm here to let you know God, God can help you move from that valley of bitterness. God does not want us to live in our hurt. God doesn't want us to live at that place. God wants to take us from that valley of pain, that, that valley of bitterness. And, and look, maybe, and, and in fact, you have the right to be mad. You, you have the right to be angry. You have the absolute right. But allow God to help you to move from that place and to forgive. It was Jesus who was on the cross they mocked him. They jeered him. They said, they said, if you are the Christ, come down from that cross. Jesus was there on that cross, thinking of all of our sins, thinking about how literally feeling our rebellion and our turning from him. And Jesus responded to our sin, our offense against him, our betrayal of him. He responded by saying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Let that be your prayer today as well. So what does God want us to do if we experience hurt and anger? What does God want us to do when we, if we win or if we experience hurt or anger? God has provided for us a way through Jesus Christ to escape the cycle of anger that leads us to bitterness. And, and rather, instead of holding the hurt and the anger, we can choose to release them. We don't have to hold on to it. We can release it. And this releasing of that anger, this releasing of the hurt, that is what we call forgiveness. It is a choice, it is a cognizant choice that we make to release our offender of any debt or offense that they are guilty of. Now, now, when, now what, what does that word, when I, when I say release them, what, how would you define that word release? How, how would you define that, that word release? How, how would you define that, that, 
that word release. I would define it as letting go. Letting go. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Letting go. Letting go. Easier said than done. <laughs> it's easier. I remember when I was, um, I remember when I was, it was, it was actually Bible college. Somebody had, had hurt me and, and um, I was praying in chapel. We, we had a, a type of prayer meeting and the president, Sister Gussie, amazing woman of God, she uh, knelt beside me and said, the Lord told me to tell you to forgive that person. <laughs> and I really thought I had, I thought I'd done that. I thought I had forgiven him. And I had to revisit where I was emotionally, where I was. Did I actually release it? Did I actually release it? Did I actually let the offense go? Or did I kind of, or did I just start to live with it, right? And so I'm saying that you may think you've actually forgiven somebody when in fact, maybe you need to revisit it and make sure your heart is at that right place, at the place where if you see that person or, or if you were to see them, your heart, your heart rate wouldn't increase. Nothing would change about your demeanor or how you feel because you would have released it. I want you to look here at Ephesians chapter four, verse 31 and 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32. We're turning there. We thank God for Sister Sheila, Sister Palmer, uh, Sister Sheila, and Sister Rhoda, who is here tonight with us. We're looking at Ephesians 4. Verse 31, and while you're turning there, hit that like button, hit the share button. Let's get the word out. Praise the Lord. Somebody needs the capacity to forgive. All right, so Ephesians 4, listen to what, listen to what the scriptures say here. The Bible says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. In verse 32, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, watch this, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Wow. What is, what is this verse directly teaching us and encouraging us to do? What is this passage directly teaching us and encouraging us to do? Saying to the, that all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor. It's encouraging us to forgive and not hold on to the past. And look at, to extend the forgiveness, amen, that God has for us. What I like about this passage, y'all, is in verse 31. Look at the descriptive and look at the, uh, the progression of emotions that are born out of for unforgiveness, bitterness, wrath, anger. Clamor. That word clamor means just being loud and boisterous and just kind of always, you know, rambunctious. Clamor. Quick, quick to pop off, quick to quick to fight. And then it says evil speaking. Y'all know when somebody offends you, you want to talk trash about them. When somebody messes, messes with your life and, and messes with your marriage, messes with your kids, you want to you wanna speak evil. So the Bible also mentions evil speaking. The Bible says, let it be put away from you. In other words, if it is, if it is here in your heart, let's put it away from us, detach it from us. 
If you're bitter, it's time to detach it. If you're wrathful, it's time to detach it. If you're angry, it's time to detach. If you're clamorous, if you're, if you're speaking evil of others, it is time to detach. And the Bible says with all malice, malice meaning you, you just, uh, malice indicating that the person just has this negative disposition, this, you know, have you, have you ever met somebody who was just always negative, always seeing the worst in a situation, always skeptical of everybody, skeptical of everything? Put all of that away, that, that type of malicious, I'm ready to tear you down type of attitude. But, uh, but, in, uh, but on the contrary, the Bible is telling us, be kind one to another, tenderhearted. And here's a big phrase, forgiving one another, forgiving one another. Because of our human nature, we will hurt each other. We will offend each other. We have to have a heart to forgive. Look at Colossians now, Colossians 3. And verse eight. Colossians three and verse eight. And the word says here, but now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. And listen, if it's in your mouth, if it's in your mouth, it came from somewhere. If, if it's in your mouth, it came from your head. If it came from your head, it came from your heart. So the Bible is saying, what does the Bible mean here in verse eight, the first section, the first half of this passage, but now ye also put off. What type of imagery comes to mind when you when you read that? But now you also put off. What comes to mind with that type with with that type of descriptive? Put off all evil thoughts, all the things that we keep remembering from day to day. Put off all these anger, wrath, malice, and blasphemy. Healthy communication. Right. And so when the pastor just put it off, what type, what, what do we do in our regular life that, that puts that descriptive? We get home from work. What do we do? Our work clothes. Right? You walk outside a rainy day with your coat on, you put it off. And, and this is, I, I like that in the chat to put off is to take off, to put down. I love that, not holding on to it, removing it from us, out of our minds and our actions. I like that, out of our minds and actions. Uh, I see here, Faye Dunn. Oh yeah, you said, I put it off to take it down. And Evangelist Thomas, uh, my mother said, you uh, said you got to get rid of it. Amen to that. You got to get rid of it for, for sure. That's what it means to put it off. And so think, 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 think of this in your life. If any of this exists, ask God to help you to, to literally put it off, to take it off to take it off, right? Let's, let's turn to Proverbs 20, verse 22. One, one, of, one of the things, and, and actually I'll, I'll, I'll say this in the form of a question. Let, let's, let's read Proverbs 20, verse 22. And it says this, say not thou I will recompense, or sorry, recompense, say not thou that I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord and he shall save thee. Listen, underline that verse. You want to talk about a passage that is powerful in its, in its, uh, in its answer to dealing with forgiveness, or rather unforgiveness, sorry. One of one of the things about grudge holding is that you want revenge. And if not revenge, you want to see recompense. You want to see 
justice. <laughs> I, was, I was driving to work I was on the highway and there was this guy who was driving like an absolute Jamaican. I'll say that. I don't know if you've ever been to Jamaica. You see those taxi drivers in Jamaica, how they drive? Oof, it is a sight to behold. It, it looks like Formula One racing. I, that's how these taxi drivers in Jamaica drive, right? And this guy, he was, he was on, on I-75 and he was riding right up on people, like on their bumper and just zooming between lanes aggressively, wildly. And I'm thinking, what kind of foolishness is this? And he was just harassing everybody, driving right up on them, cutting them off. And then he drove up right behind this, 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 this black car and was right on the guy's bumper. And, and then out of nowhere, I see police lights flash on. The car that he was right, the car that he was tailing was a police car. And I was so happy. I said, oh, and I felt, I felt like recompense. You were doing all this crazy stuff. Now you're going to pay. There is something about when somebody does us wrong, we want to see recompense. But look, but look here what the Bible is saying. It's saying, say not thou, I will recompense evil. But the Bible is saying here, but wait on the Lord and he shall save thee. Oh man, this is so good. So what the Bible is saying here to us is rather than having a heart of, you know what, you deserve judgment. You deserve to go to hell. You deserve pain. You deserve recompense. You, you deserve evil returning to you. The Bible says, don't say that. But the Bible says, wait on the Lord and he shall save thee. In other words, if there is hurt, he will heal thee. Where there is pain, he will heal you. Where, wherever it is, God will step into that place and minister to your life to make you whole. I love that. That is, that is good stuff. God bless you, Sister Marjorie, Brother Alton. God bless you, my brother. Thank you for joining us tonight. So the Bible is saying, let's not live our lives expecting recompense, but rather let us go before God. And therefore what, therefore, what this passage is really teaching us is that forgiveness is more about us than it is about the object of our forgiveness. For the Bible to say here, say thou not I will recompense evil. In other words, my focus is not on whether justice will be served particularly but my focus is on where my heart is concerning that person, where my heart is concerning that situation. That's what the word is saying here. What a powerful, what a powerful passage to consider. And so as we, as we let go of the offense, we will find healing. Because look, if we continue to bring up the offense, if we continue to, to live in it, it serves as a signal that we have not released it to God, right? That is, that is an indication that you haven't released it. So you need to release it. And as we let go of the debt, the hurt, the anger, we are thereby releasing life like a breath of fresh air back into our being and back into our lives. We therefore are allowing the expression of Christ to be visible in and through our lives. That prayer that Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them for, for they know not what they do. That prayer to me is, is, is really where I go to forgive people. We spoke a couple of weeks ago about spiritual warfare, and we spoke about how we don't, and when we spoke about how we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, that is, that is my approach to people who, who offend me. I don't look at them. I look at what the enemy is trying to do through their lives, and I therefore feel compassion for them, that if somebody can be brought to such a place to do such a heinous thing, there must have been a spirit. Uh, uh, uh. There must have been some some type of oppression from the enemy, some type some type of attack from the enemy that that has brought them to a place to commit such a heinous act. 
And while, while I feel they're wrong for the act, and while I feel that, you know, that, that, that they deserve whatever comes of their choice as, as life such is, I yet feel compassion and I therefore forgive because I'm saying, Father, what I say, God, what drove them to that place to do that? What, what, what drove them? And, and, and so that, it, that, that essentially is what that prayer is. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They're being driven by forces outside of themselves. They're being driven. And, and, and while at the end of the day, it is their free will for whatever reason, it could be generation. It's amazing when you look at people and the things that they do. We tend to look at people's behavior as a sole act, but we never question what happened to them. What happened to them that exposed them to that and therefore brought them to a place to repeat the same thing? So we have to be, and, and, and this is easier said than done because look, let, let, let's keep it real. Let, let, let's keep it, let, let's keep it hundred percent real. Somebody can do something that is heinous, some, something that is wrong, something that, that crosses a line, something that robs somebody of, of precious elements of a, of, a, of a pure life as it were. And if you're the object of that action, it's, you're not trying to think about, well, who did it to them as to why they did that to me. So I, I get it, I get it. But that being said, we still ought to go to God and say, Lord, I'm not focused just, just like we read in Proverbs 20, say, say thou not, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, he will heal you. He will save you. He will make you whole. That in spite of the hurt, in spite of what was done, God can, God can repair the broken areas in your life and god will therefore give you the capacity to forgive which is the next question what enables us to forgive what enables us to forgive how would how how would how would you answer that question what enables us to forgive I would say the love of God in our hearts. Amen. Will help us to go get through it. Absolutely. And to, yeah. Absolutely. God's love is real. Absolutely. I see that in the chat. The Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts, he enables us. And I want us to read Colossians 2.13 and read it from this context. The enablement to forgive. And the um, and the reason why we forgive. I want you to read uh, Colossians two verse thirteen. And while you're turning there, hit that share button. We appreciate you. Okay. Colossians two verse thirteen. Go ahead, thank you. And you being dead in your sins and in the uncircumcised, uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. And actually, and read, read verse 14 as well, Sister Sheila, thank you. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us and took us out of the way, nailing it to the cross, to his cross. Right. This is huge because I want everyone in the chat to pick out something here in reference to forgiveness, in reference to why we ought to forgive others. What is this passage saying? in reference to what God has done for us, in reference to how he has forgiven us. And how does that correlate to how we ought to forgive others? What in here indicates how God has forgiven us and specifically what he has done to forgive us?
I'll start. Oh, no, I won't start. I want to see what the chat has to say. What is, what is it in Colossians 2, verse 13 and 14 that explains to us how God has forgiven us and thereby how we ought to forgive others and how we ought to forgive others? Let me lead off. It says here in verse 13 that we were dead in our sins and in the uncircumcision of our flesh, but he has quickened us together with him, having forgiven all of our trespasses. We were dead to rights. We were done. We were finished. We were finished. I like that. Uh, uh, Jesus died for us. God giving us, uh, God forgiving us should make us want to forgive others. Amen to that. And that's what this passage is saying, that we were dead in our sins. Dead. We were finished. God resurrected us. When he, when, when he could have left us dead and decaying, the Bible says here, not only, watch this, not only did he forgive us, my God, see, watch this, you can forgive, they say forgive, but I don't forget, right? Y'all heard that? You know, they say forgive, but never forget. But look at what this is saying. They're saying, for God has forgiven you, hallelujah, God has forgiven you of your all your trespasses, everything you did against God wrong, he has forgiven you. Every mistake you made, no matter how big, how small, God has forgiven you. The things that you have not even forgiven yourself for, God has forgiven you. Do you get what the Bible is saying? God has completely and thoroughly forgiven you. But not only that, verse 14 continues, and verse 14 says he, bl he blotted out the hand of Right, the, the handwriting of ordinance that was against us. So not only did he forgive us, but everything that was written on the wall, that everything, everything, everything that we were guilty of that was written on the wall, you did this, you did that. Yes, you're forgiven, but guess what? It's still there reminding you, this is everything you did. This is all you did. And so, and so guess what? Even though, even though you are forgiven, there is a record of your mistakes. There is a record of your past. There is a record before God of your mistakes. But the Bible is saying that God has forgiven you of all your trespasses, and he blotted out, he washed the wall clean. He washed it away. Every accusation, rightful accusation against us, God has blotted it out. He has blotted every ordinance that was written against us, which was contrary to us. And watch this. The Bible says God took it out of the way. It was blocking us from salvation. It was blocking us from our breakthrough. It was blocking us from our healing. The Bible says God took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Hallelujah. Nailing it to his cross, meaning it was, it's over. You're forgiven. God bless you, Erica Thomas. Thank you for joining us. So he has forgiven you. I love that. Listen, I, I, feel, I feel the Holy Ghost on that right there. It doesn't matter what the enemy is telling you. God has forgiven you. It doesn't matter. And, 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 and listen, there's somebody watching. You are carrying the weight of your past. You are carrying the baggage of your mistakes. And you feel like there is a, you feel like there is a perpetual stain that cannot be washed away. You feel like everywhere you go, God is looking down on you. Yeah, God loves me, but God is kind of mad at me. No, no, no. God, the Bible is saying that God has forgiven you of all your trespasses and that God has blotted out the handwritten ordinances that was written against you. You are completely and totally forgiven. I mean, think about what that means. And therefore, when we, as we receive this, 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 this amazing gift of forgiveness, we must then also be willing to forgive others. And personally, for me, that's why I do my best to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. That's why I do my best to lead with forgiveness, because I think about how good God has been to me. I think about how God has washed me. I think about how God has given me another chance and another chance and another chance. 
And so when somebody stumbles or when somebody falls or, or when somebody messes up in reference to their relationship with me, I'm saying, look, I get it. I get it. And guess what? Forgiveness, and I, I, I kind of use this example all the time. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you have to give the, the person the keys to your house. You know what I'm saying? But forgiveness is of such where you will want the best for that person in spite of what was done. You want the best for them in a wholesome way. You want them to be whole. You want them also to be healed. Because, because remember what they always say, hurt people hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. And the majority of the time, somebody who is somebody who has hurt you has been hurt themselves. So the question is, how do we forgive? How do we forgive in a real practical way? Well, the first thing we wanna do is we need to acknowledge the hurt. We need to acknowledge the hurt. That's the first thing we do. We acknowledge the hurt and charge the debt by acknowledging to God and yourself that it happened. You, and literally name the event. This is the first step to forgive me. For, for, forgive me. You, you, gotta, you gotta go back to that place. Huh. Oh boy, this is heavy. You gotta go back to that place where the hurt is. You gotta go back to that place. You gotta unlock that door. And you gotta charge that debt by acknowledging to God and yourself that yes, this, this happened. Name the event. And until we acknowledge the hurt, there's nothing to forgive. So we have to acknowledge it. Acknowledge how it made you feel and charge that emotional debt by describing yourself and the hurt that you felt. And you, and, 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 and you put, that at the, and put that at the foot of the cross. Say, Lord, I'm taking all of this. I'm leaving it right here. Bring it to God. I'm leaving it here. And then you want to release the person from the debt that they owe you. Release that person. Choose to give that debt to God and reckon that account settled. God, I don't know why they did that. Lord, I don't know why they did that. It, 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 it hurt me. It completely wrecked my life. But God, as you've forgiven me, Father, I forgive them. And, and if you honestly don't have the capacity to forgive. That is where you say, Father, give me the heart to forgive. Lord, work in me, heal me, and grant me the capacity to forgive. And as you pray that prayer over and over and over, the love of God will be shed abroad in your heart. The love of God will wash over your soul over and over until you will find in yourself the capacity to forgive. God understands the level of difficulty that this is. And that's why the Lord wants you to go to him. And so maybe you don't have the capacity. Maybe, maybe it's just too much to ask right now. Maybe this is deep hurt. So what you do is you, you, what you do is you, is you say, God, help me to forgive. Give me the heart to really let this go. God, bring me to that place. And watch, when that happens, as you pray that prayer, what's going to happen over time as you forgive? You, you, you will begin to accept that person unconditionally. You will, you, you will accept that person unconditionally. And you will, and watch this, and you will surrender the right for them to change in order for you to forgive them. In other words, and this is, you see, 
it is, I'll say it this way. Let's say, let's say I offend you. Let's say I deeply offend you. And I come to understand and learn that, yes, indeed, I have offended you. And I come to you and I say, hey, look, my brother, look, my sister, I, I'm sorry for what I said. I'm sorry for what I did. I was totally wrong. And I'm genuine in my apology. I'm genuine in terms of feeling remorseful. It is easy to forgive somebody who's remorseful. But here's a question. How do you forgive somebody who is not remorseful? How do you forgive somebody who is not sorry? How do you forgive somebody who still maintains the same attitude that brought about the situation in the first place and it is active and it is present? Whew. How do you forgive that? It can be done by the grace of God. The Bible says, when we were in our sins, the Bible says in Romans 5, 8, that God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And what that means is God is omniscient. God sees everything. God is omnipresent. God is everywhere at the same time. He is the beginning and he is the end. He's the alpha. He's the omega. When God saw mankind, and saw our sin before we even said, Lord, I'm sorry. He said, no, I'm going to the cross for them. <laughs> before we even said, Lord, I made a mistake. God said, I'm going to the cross for them. We were not apologetic. He still went to the cross. We were not sorry at that time for our rebellion. He still went to the cross for us while we were yet sinners. And so here is how God enables us to forgive. God will literally give you a new heart. God will give you a new heart because God will step in by the power of the Holy Spirit and he will, he will begin to heal those broken areas. He will begin to heal those torn areas. He will begin to do a work that only he can do. And when God is done with you, you will find yourself free of the bitterness, free of the malice, free of hatred. And all of those feelings of vitriol and all those feelings, all those feelings of vitriol and all those feelings of, 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 of hurt and anger will be replaced with compassion. Believe it or not, you'll say, man, you crazy. There ain't no way I'll be compassionate for that one. Ain't no way I'm gonna be compassionate for him. There's no way I'll be compassionate for him. No, 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 you will because, because, you, will, because you will begin to see them not through the perspective of your hurt, not through the perspective of the natural experience that you went through, but you will begin to see them through the perspective of the changed heart that God placed in you. Because now he took out that old heart he and he took out all that pain. He, he took out all of that. And now he's given you a new heart and you, and you will begin to see them from a different perspective. And you'll say, oh my goodness, I wonder what drove them to this. Look at how the enemy tried to use them to destroy my life. Look at how the enemy has taken over their life. And now you realize that is a soul that is bound by whatever sin drove them to the foolishness that they did. There was a, there was a stronghold in them, over them, that is driving them headlong to, to an eternal burning hell. And therefore you will have compassion because now you have a new heart concerning that specific situation. Now, th there are some misconceptions about forgiveness that I want to close with. Um, the misconception that says forgiveness requires that I, that I no longer feel angry. There, and the truth is there are times, especially when you're actively Specifically, when you are in a situation where that person is still 
in that mode and they're not sorry and they're not remorseful and 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 they, and they and you see flashes of that same attitude there's part of us that will get angry like what a man this this is mm. but then the spirit of god will come in to help you another misconception that says through the passage of time the process of forgetting leads to forgiveness that's not true that's not true the process of forgetting does not lead to forgiveness. The process of the work of the Holy Spirit leads to forgiveness. And so I wanna encourage you tonight to forgive. I wanna encourage you tonight to forgive. I wanna say this last thing. I wanna identify hindrances to asking for forgiveness. Because maybe you need to ask for forgiveness. Maybe you are the one who needs to ask for forgiveness. And the enemy doesn't want us to take that step of reconciliation because the enemy wants us to be angry with one another. But if you know that you need to make it right with somebody, do it. And here are some examples of hindrances to asking for forgiveness. Believing that it's not worth the effort. Do you believe it's not worth the effort? Oh, I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm not even going to try. It's, it's been too long. Or believing it's the other person's fault. Trying to, trying to blame it on the other person. Believing it's their fault. Or some people believe that asking for forgiveness is a sign of weakness. Absolutely not. Or some people carry the need to be right, or they're just prideful and they are arrogant. They refuse to be humble. If that's you, I wanna encourage you, seek forgiveness. Seek forgiveness. If you've hurt somebody, go to them. I remember uh, I was in Bible college. I had offended somebody in Bible college. I, I, honestly, I, whatever I said, it was completely harmless. It wasn't offensive at all well i didn't think it was <laughs> it was just normal conversation and i found out that my college mate really felt offended and i was so shocked that i almost was offended that she was offended i'm like how are you offended about that i didn't, I didn't say nothing how are you so i was literally offended that she was offended i'm like you mad about what but regardless i was like look i apologize for how I offended you, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to offend you. And I, I apologize. I went to her and said, forgive me. And so may we be challenged tonight. We're gonna stop here. It's, it's already 8.30. I, I don't wanna go any, any further. But I wanna encourage you tonight, as the word said, to let go. Let go of it, forgive. Forgive. And I want to encourage you to pray this prayer. Lord, search me and know me and see if there be any wicked way in me. That, that word wicked in the King James Version, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, destructively evil and grossly diabolical. It means if there is any sinful way that doesn't please you, Lord, if, if, if there's any sinful way that doesn't please God, that's what David is saying. Search me, know me, see if there is any wicked way in me. Ask God to search you, to identify, because here's the truth, and here is where the rubber meets the road. There are believers who will not make it into heaven because they refuse to forgive. There are preachers who preach every Sunday. There are people on choirs, deacons, deaconesses, people who feed the poor, who clothe the naked. They do all of these things, but because they won't forgive. I heard a testimony of a man who he was a pastor, preach all, he preached all over the world. And we'll close with this testimony. He preached all over the world. And 
His wife had got him upset one day, one night. <laughs> His wife got him upset. And he was so mad, he walked in the house, he wouldn't even talk to her. He just went to his room and he went to his room and he locked her out the room. He wouldn't even let her sleep in the room. He locked her out the room. The next morning he got up, went to do his pastoral duties. So he got up and he left, didn't say anything to her. Got up and walked out the house. He was angry with her. And as he was on the road, he was going down a hill and his brakes failed. And he crashed and he died. And when he died, he said that he, he saw himself leave his body and he encountered Jesus. And he said, Jesus literally took him to heaven and showed him the beauty of heaven the grandeur of heaven. And it was rather accurate because I've heard other testimonies of people who have literally died and there are specific things that he also saw. I believe his experience was absolutely authentic. Jesus showed him heaven and its beauty. And then Jesus said, I'm gonna show you hell. And Jesus took him down to the depths of hell and he heard the crying and he heard the gnashing of teeth. He heard people crying for mercy, but it was too late. And Jesus was there carrying through the corridors of hell. And he said, Jesus himself was weeping for these souls. And Jesus, at one point, he said, Jesus turned to him and he said to him, if your number was to be called today, this would be your lot. And the man stood there shocked. He said, hold on, Jesus, that can't be. I preach all over the world. I just preached last Sunday. I seek your face. I serve you with an honest heart. Up here, how could this be? There's no way. How could this be my lot? And Jesus looked at him and Jesus said, because you did not forgive your wife, I cannot forgive you. I, I listened to him and I just said, wow. All the good he did, all the ministry he did, all the people he helped, all the souls saved going to heaven because of him. He, if his number, if his lot was to be called that day, if his number was to be called that day, that would have been his lot because he refused to forgive his wife. And so I want to encourage you today in the strongest terms possible. Search your heart. Search your life. And wherever that person is, they abandoned you. They left you. They crossed the line. They took your innocence. Whatever it is, Go to God and ask the Holy Spirit to help you and to give you and to release in you the capacity to forgive. Because one thing I know about God is that if you ask him, he will answer. If you seek him, he'll show up and he'll do what only he can do. So I want to encourage you tonight. Forgive, forgive, forgive. And some people say, well, look, 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 look pastor. That person I gotta forgive is already dead. They they dead. What I gotta go dig up their bones? Please don't. But yet God, but but God can yet give you the capacity to forgive what to forgive a situation that doesn't even have closure. He'll do it. He'll do it. He will give you the capacity to forgive. And so I want to encourage you. Forgive, 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 forgive so that your heavenly father can also forgive you. Let me pray and I'm gonna let you go. Thank you for joining us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this somber challenge tonight. And even as I pray this prayer, my heart is weighted down for those who struggle in pain. 
for those who have gone through experiences that cannot be mentioned, for those who carry scars that run 20 years deep, 30 years deep, those who have endured heinous realities to the extent where it literally feels impossible to forgive. But Father, I pray for them right now. And I pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ, that you would create in them the capacity to forgive. I pray for those who feel broken and, and those who feel lost in their pain. I pray for those who don't know which way to turn and, 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 and literally everywhere they turn, all they see is what occurred. Grant them healing tonight. Grant them deliverance in their soul. I pray God that you would step in by your divine spirit to weave and to make whole what has been torn and broken and release in them, a release in them the capacity of your love that number one, that would heal them and make them whole and that will bring forth the capacity to forgive. And so I pray for them. I pray for those who cannot forgive, who feel that they don't carry the capacity. Father, step Step in today by your spirit. Help them today. And for the rest of us, Father God, help us to actively search our hearts. And Father, when you bring to our remembrance, maybe through what somebody says, maybe through a phone call, maybe through an email or a text, when you bring to, when you bring to, the, to the surface what we need to deal with, Give us the heart to face it and not to bury it again, that we would forgive. Father, we thank you for how you have forgiven us. We thank you for how you have washed us. We thank you for how you've shown us such, such unconditional love and mercy. We receive your love. We receive your grace. We receive your forgiveness. Help us now to turn and offer that to those who who are most undeserving in our lives. Help us to be like you and to forgive. And we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Listen, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if, you, you can, if you want prayer, just reach out to us in the DMs. That's what the true purpose for the DMs are, for ministry direct ministry that's what dms are for direct ministry so please uh, hit us up in the dms and the comments we will pray for you we love you god will god, god will help you god god will help you god will help you i believe it and so just be encouraged god is going to bring you to the place where you need to be so you can forgive listen thank you for joining us uh lord terry's we will be back next week and if you are in the south florida area We'd love for you to come worship with us. The Fountainside family is waiting. They're eager to meet you at 7020 Pines Boulevard. Please join us. Also, you can, you can, you can peruse our, our Fountainside YouTube channel. There is tons of content there. Uh, and, and I know that uh, I know that I know that you'll be blessed. And so please uh, just go by there. And listen, if if you want to support this ministry, hit that share button copy this link somebody needs help and forgiveness so send us out to somebody also you'll see uh um also if you so desire you you can go on our fountainside page and you can also uh, worship and giving should should the lord lead you in that way we thank god for you god bless you we hope you have a great evening we're praying for and remember forgive 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 take care we love you god bless you